So just extrapolate. That's how he behaves with someone he doesn't really know. Do the math. Now I'm going to play you, and, and people, oh, I can't believe you're doing this. He set the ground rules. I've blocked his phones. I don't want to hear from Royce. I don't, have, I don't want to engage with Royce. Royce is toxic, and I don't want to be involved in it. So I've blocked him on Twitter, blocked his cell phones. He called me last night or this morning, I can't, I can't remember, uh, from a different phone number so he could get through. He, he did the podcast in October talking about private conversation, ended the friendship. And so the reason I'm going to play this voicemail from Royce is he's any other politician. If Ted Cruz or uh, AOC or Nancy Pelosi or Maxine Waters or Josh Hawley, if they called me and left this voice message, I would play it. I would say, wow, look at this politician, and, and this is how uh, they behave, and this is how they interact with people that criticize them. So I'm going to play you the voicemail message that Royce left me. Judge for yourself. You still carrying water, huh? You still carrying water, shilling for the military industrial. Hey, t tell Mark Levin and Glenn Beck I said what's up. And stop carrying water. You're running around like a little bitch. You know you ain't even built like that. I don't know why you even want to play around with me. You 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 can't go around the, the kiddie pool with me. You already on your own show saying that I'm much deeper and more intelligent than you. Don't make me start pulling those clips. You don't even want to go there with me. You you work on work on your impulse issues, work on your eating issues, make sure that you get yourself down to a weight that's well below the the, the average uh, BMI uh, body mass index. Make sure you get yourself healthy before you want to go go around the, the, the arena with somebody like me. Make sure that you get yourself right first, man. For real. You know, you, the, the stuff you mentioned, it's not, even, it's not even factual. That's how far out over your skis you are. And then you block me. And good thing I found your number down here. I'm, I'm talking to you. I'm going to talk to you the way I want to talk to you, the way that nobody else around you talk to you. You can hang out with a bunch of yes men all you want to. That's fine. But the reality of the situation is everybody who watches your show long enough might take their politics with French fries. They might like the, you know, the the the, the politics with the, with, you know, with the kitty floaties on and, and the, and the kitty poop. They might accept that. But the reality is you would never be able to represent the American people because everybody knows deep down you're going to do it for the money. You in it for the money. That's why you selling your 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 audience baby food. You do baby food politics. That, that's what you do on your show. You do Stephen A. Smith, Deion Sanders, baby food politics. Over here on Please Call Me Crazy, uh, Royce White for Senate, we do big boy politics. We do real politics. We do military industrial complex. So, and that's, I didn't cut it short. That's how it ended. Uh, that's Royce White. And it's, it's revealing on several levels. One, Obviously, he knows he's being taped, and so he can only go so far, and he's choosing his words carefully. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Big J TV, man. Like, comment, subscribe, bro. <laughs> like, comment, subscribe. And the ballad of the fat bastard continues, and the story of the fat bastard continues. And you know why I like covering jason whitlock and there's a reason behind this i like covering jason whitlock because it's the inside view of a coon the inside view of a sellout the inside view of where you don't want to be when you're 50 years old you're late or mid to late 50s with no family no children no wife just your career that you're married to to be a person who is so obsessed with their work that they let it crush and destroy everything and everyone around them. He's a cautionary tale, y'all. This individual is a cautionary tale. Now, let me make this perfectly clear. I can't, I can't submit this. Jason Whitlock does have good points sometimes. He does have fair criticisms for the black family, black culture in general. I myself lean a little more conservative. I'm more, I'm more center right. I'm not right right. I'm not alt right. I'm not far right. 
I am definitely not left wing. I am very far from that. <laughs> Do not associate myself with that at all. You know what I mean? But what he says, even though a lot of it is a big old pile of poop, and I could use other words to say that, but I'm trying to work on my cussing, he does have some diamonds in the dirt. He does. But you know what? You can't trust certain people because you have to also understand their relationships, right? Because life is not just about the work. A lot of the times life is about relationships. Relationships. How you get along with people. You know what I mean? How you get along with colleagues. How you get along with your neighbor. How you get along with your family. How you get along with your community. How you get along in society. So when you see this beef. And it is a beef, by the way. I believe it's more one-sided. I believe that Jason Whitlock is one of the worst. Why is why is he even called Fat Bastard? Let's actually rewind back. He was called Fat Bastard by Stephen A. Smith. And if we're to rewind back, Stephen A. Smith worked with Jason Whitlock way, way back in the early days of ESPN. They were both columnists. Jason Whitlock was given you know, the task of working on this uh, this side of ESPN called The Undefeated, which was a black-focused, uh, you know, website or affiliate of ESPN that brought in black writers that were talking about black stories which were intertwined with sports. That failed. Stephen A., I believe, was part of that team. Jamel Hill was part of that team. Jason Whitlock was the head of that team. And Jason Whitlock, if I'm not mistaken, he did such a horrible job. They got him the hell out of there. Right. And a few years later, he was fired from ESPN. Now, his rebrand is saying that they're too woke. They didn't like his politics. They didn't like his point of view. But from what Stephen A. Smith said, and a lot of people who worked in that same industry or that same lane as him, especially black columnists, said he was a horrible boss, a horrible manager. He was rude. He was disrespectful. He was condescending. He was a piece of trash. Now we went to Fox Sports 1. He started trying to negotiate a contract after speak for yourself or speak. They didn't want him back at our first one. They said, bro, you can walk. We're not renewing your contract. He goes to Outkick with Clay Travis. I don't know what happens. He spends less than a year there. They they obviously don't work out. He's on some show called Politicking with Curtis Schoon. They start they have a falling out about two years later. Starts fearless with the Blaze Network, owned by at the time Glenn Beck, Mark Levin. Apparently, the Blaze Network was actually sold to another company, but obviously he had to have some kind of relationship with Glenn Beck and Mark Levin. Within less than a year, one of his main contributors, Uncle Jimmy, all of a sudden disappears. No explanation. They fell out. Apparently, they had some beef. And then finally, within a two-year, three-year spell, one of their top best contributors, Royce White, all of a sudden disappears from the show, from the network. And then that's where this beef happens. Guess what? Royce White doubles up and actually gains, wins the primary, the Republican primary in Minnesota, meaning he's going to go against Amy Klobuchar in Minnesota for the Senate seat. Being a senator in the United States is huge. It's pretty hard to become a senator. There's only about 100 of them inside the senate obviously you need congress and the senate in order to ratify and certify laws huge part of the government he's going against amy klobuchar it's going to be a very very hard race long story short royce white won the nomination for the republican party on tuesday yesterday despite the odds bro 
And Jason Whitlock in his infamous jealousy, player hating, destroying relationships, burn everything to the ground. You know what I mean? Be a snake and a rat and backstab everybody. Of course, he backstabs Royce White. Spent an hour and 30 minute episode today. And I'll put the clip at the beginning. Spent yesterday, I believe, another hour trashing him. See, Jason Whitlock is horrible in relationships. Not just with co-workers or friends, but just every relationship you can imagine, man. So every time he goes off on Deion Sanders, every time he goes off on Stephen A. Smith, and now going off on Royce White, his alleged ex-friend, you see how much of a snake, rat, bastard he is, and a constant reminder of what not to be. This guy is a poster of what not, a 50 seven year old loser pathetic fat bastard anyways man let me know how y'all feel about this man you know a lot of the times we need to look at what we shouldn't be we have role models in life but we have to also understand the opposite of what a role model is disgusting fat bastard big jtv let me know what y'all feel about this new story shout out rose white i'm proud of him man you know what i mean to see a black man stand up on the right side of things and you know what I mean? Despite his flaws, because everybody has flaws. And for the fat, ugly bastard to go out of his way to talk about another man's flaws when he himself doesn't spend enough time looking at the mirror at his own flaws is so disgusting. And to claim to be a Christian, man. <laughs> I'm trying to do the outro, and I, I'm and it's hard for me to do the outro because I could go off. Let me know how y'all feel about this. Get in the comments. I might do a live stream about this tomorrow. Big JTV. Get in the comments. I'm out, bro.